Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another webinar of the Master Your Connection series uh, with today's topics, uh, complex connections. My name is Lost Jamil. I work as a technical channel manager at uh, Idea Statica Asia and Pacific, and uh, I'll be your presenter today. You are all muted by default because we're using the GoToWebinar platform. However, in, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to, to ask using the, the question panel in uh, the GoTo app. The whole session is uh, being recorded. So we will place the recording of the webinar uh, to our web page and uh, to our YouTube channel after we finish the session. What is uh, today's agenda? Uh, we'll be uh, modeling beam to column connection with Brazen. So I'll show you how to model such a connection using individual manufacturing operations, share a few tips and tricks. Also, uh, we'll focus on a connection with, uh, with a stiffening member and uh, usage of uh, more advanced or special operations. And uh, last but not least, uh, will be uh, solving some typical cases for analysis with either 0% or if the analysis doesn't reach uh, 100%. So uh, let's, uh, let's jump uh, right through the practical demonstration. I'll switch off my camera. Okay. And uh, let's start with uh, with the complex connection. Yeah, we we have a beam, horizontal beam with a vertical column, some longitudinal bracings together with uh, with diagonal bracings. This is a completely blank uh, project beside uh, beside the members, and uh, I'll show you how to connect individual members uh, together. So at first, uh, let me change the cross section of uh, of the top uh, member. Yeah? So we would like to use a general member for for this one. So I'll select the the member, and in the property grid, click the plus button, change the sections to the welded and composed sections, and uh, select a general steel cross section. Now uh, the cross-section editor automatically opens and uh, we can proceed with the definition. So at first we need to define the master component of the general cross-section. I'll be using the same profile as, uh, as the initial setup. So I'll look for HEA uh, 200. Okay, confirm okay. And now I want to define some additional plates to the sides of, uh, of the web of the cross section of the column. So I'll click on new and I'll select the plate from, from the library. We'll proceed with this one. So I click on okay. And now it appears right in the center of the cross section. So what we need to do, we need to uh, change the position of, uh, of this edit plate. At first, uh, at the bottom, we need to define the master component. So now I define the master component. It means that uh, the software knows that this edit plate will be uh, somehow joined to the to the master component, to the cross section, to HEA 200. Now we need to select the master point. It stays at uh, S0 and uh, we need to define the insert point of this plate. So it'll be point number six. So I'll just change it. And now we see that uh, the plate is in a correct position, but still overlaps with the columns web a little bit. So what I will do, I'll shift the plate more to the left, and now it's in the right position. So, now I want to have the same plate uh, just on the other side of the cross section. So I can uh, repeat the whole process, add a new one or copy 
existing plate. Just change the insert point from six to four. And uh, change the Y coordinates like this. Okay, so now I'm quite satisfied. I confirm okay. And uh, I see in the graphic scene that the top uh, cross section has been changed to the general one. Now, one important thing uh, to ensure that all uh, all plates of the general cross section are connected together. I will go to the material section, and if I select the general cross section on the right side of the app. I see the, the, the shape of the general cross section. And to check that the plates are indeed connected to the columns web, I focus on, on this center. So those blue lines, they represent uh, rigid links and butt welds in the mall. So this serves as a control, as a check that uh, the edit, uh, edit components, in this case, those plates are indeed connect it uh, to the to the cross section correctly so this is how you can check if all parts of the general cross section are uh, connected properly so i'll go back uh, to the design tab and proceed with the definition of uh, of the cross section so the column is divided into two individual and data uh, members that the reason for that is that, uh, firstly, I want to use uh, different cross sections for, for different parts of the column. And secondly, I want to connect uh, the column above uh, the top edge of the horizontal beam. I have several options uh, how to do it. I could define a working plate and cut the member with the working plane or if I know that I, I would to design a splice connection or define splice connection, I can do it right away using the manufacturing operation. So I'll click on operations in the top ribbon. And before I define the, the operation, let me explain the division of the manufacturing operations. So in the first row and uh, in the fourth row, this is a set of uh, what I like to call basic operations. Yeah? So cut, stiffener, add uh, bolts, welds, etc. If you combine those basic operations together, you get what I call uh, enhanced uh, operations. Yeah? Those are the ones in the, in the middle. So end plate, uh, shifted end plate, stop, splice connection, and uh, base plate connection, etc. And at the bottom of the wizard, uh, there is a set of, uh, of special or uh, advanced uh, operations. Yeah. So I'll be using a combination of, uh, of everything. And the first, uh, first uh, operation I'd like to define is plate to plate member splice. So I want to use bolt grade 8.8 .8 and uh, bolts M16. Confirm OK. All right, so the thickness of, uh, of the plates is uh, 10 millimeters, right? The position, I'll shift the position of, uh, of the splice or of the plates 250 millimeters from the center of the joint, like this, okay. Now I need to uh, change the position. So I want to have it aligned with edges of the, of the cross section. Can change to profile symmetrical. And now I need to uh, modify the bolt uh, layout. So the bolt layout, the top layers will be negative 50 millimeters and left layers negative 30 millimeters. Okay. That looks good, uh, and I will change the welds to butt welds. Okay, looks good. So uh, we connected uh, 
individual cross sections of the column together. Now I want to uh, connect also the horizontal member. So I can use the same uh, workflow using manufacturing operations, or I can use the, the leverage of the connection library that is implemented within the connection application. So I can right click on the horizontal member and set connect to and uh, select the web of, uh, of the column. Now what the application will do, uh, it will automatically show me maybe let's okay sorry for that okay so now the connection library uh opened and uh, i can use the filters on the left side to filter up moment connections and uh this uh this connection looks looks nice so i'll i'll use it i'll change the material because we're using a different material grade and the bowl assembly is m16 8.8 okay so now the template uh, has been applied to to my model and as you can see there is some unwanted gap so it means that uh, we will need to modify this uh, this uh, connection a little bit. So I'll delete uh, this cut, and now the cut uh, the the gap disappeared, and I'll go through individual edit operations and modify them according to my needs. So the top stiffener, I want to have it aligned with the top edge of the horizontal beam. That is uh, that is correct. Now I'll modify the end plate a little bit. So the thickness stays 14, uh, 14 millimeters. Top uh, position is 10 millimeters. Bottom position is 220 millimeters. Okay. And the top reinforcement layout. I'll add one more row of uh, bolts. The left layout is negative 45 millimeters. Bottom layer uh, will be 70, spacebar 90, like this, and the right layers again 45 millimeters. Okay, that looks good. That looks how I want it uh, to be. What I can also do, I can change the welds to zero millimeters. What does uh, that mean? I don't need to. Uh, at this point, I don't care about the thickness and I want the, the software to take care of it uh, instead of me. So if I change the thickness or throw the thickness of the weld to zero, the software will automatically uh, apply corresponding thickness based on the applied uh, weld. In this case, it's a double filled weld. So the, the throw thickness of the weld will be as a half of the thickness of the web and the connected uh, connected element so we'll change the the widener uh, a little bit the thickness is 6.5 millimeters yeah i want to have it on webs uh, only at the bottom edge so the location stays as uh, front the width is uh, 200 millimeters and the depth is 250 millimeters okay this the shape uh, i would like to have it as a triangular with a flange with bottom flange so i'll change the thickness uh, to 10 millimeters and the width stays uh, 120 millimeters that uh, that looks good so now we will just modify the rest of the stiffeners i want to have the bottom stiffener allied aligned to the bottom edge of uh, of the widener so what i can do i can change the position to zero now it's related to the center of uh, of the joint or actually the, the center of this splice but as i said i want to have it here aligned with the bottom edge of the widener so in the property grid uh, in the related to section i'll select the plate and using the mouse cursor button, I can select the plate 
and uh, it automatically recognizes the, the plate uh, to which the stiffener will be related to. And uh, I'll do the same with the last one. The thickness is 10 millimeters and it's also related to the edge of the widener like this. Now we see that we have two sets of uh, stiffeners. So I'll change the position again and set only lower position. So now I have only one pair of uh, stiffeners in a place where I want them exactly. Okay, so we've connected the horizontal member to the column and now we will connect uh, those longitudinal bracings, uh, those rectangular uh, tubes to the column. And I want to use a stop operation for that. So I'll go to operations and uh, select the stop operation. Now I need to define the corresponding member. So it's member M5. The position is uh, indeed 250. The thickness of plates is six millimeters. We immediately see all changes uh, in the graphic scene. Yeah, and now we will just uh, modify the dimensions of the plates of the stop connection. So the position in top is 40 millimeters and the extension to the left and right side is 10, uh, 10 millimeters like this. And now we will change the, the bolt layout because we see that the bolts are concentrated in the center of the plate. So at first I want to add a new uh, bolt grade. So we'll be using M12 8.8 for this uh, for this part and uh, top layer will be 20 millimeters outside of, uh, of the cross section and the left layer negative 25 uh, millimeters. Okay, good. So now I uh, need to connect the, the stop part to the columns web. So I'll click on operation again and select the, the cut operation. I want to cut stop by column swap. You see, I really like to use these uh, mouse cursors and select uh, the parts of the connection in the graphic scene directly. It significantly saves time and I don't, I don't need to remember the name of individual components. And we see, we see the, the weld, okay. So now I can easily copy the operation, select member M4 to apply the stop also to the other part of the, of the model. And uh, I'll do the same with the cut. So we'll cut in stop two by the columns web. Yeah, that looks good. And the last part I need to connect is I need to connect those uh, diagonal bracings to, to the column somehow. So again, I'll go to operations and uh, this time I'll be using connecting plate operation. So it's on member M6, right? It's related uh, to member M1 indeed, and also related to stop. Okay, now I just need to uh, modify the properties of this connecting plate. So the thickness stays uh, 10 millimeters, the width is uh, 230 and uh, the depth is 150. Uh, sorry, it's quite the opposite, 150 to 30. Okay, like this, good. And the exposition is to 85. See this exposition? This it's always related to the center of uh, of the joint. If I turn on the transparent mode, transparent view, I see the dimension line 285 from the center of the joint uh, to the edge of the of the cap plate of the 
uh, connect template uh, operation. Okay, so let's uh, let's continue the plate length uh, uh, of the cap plate will be 120. Yeah, the width will be 110 millimeters. There is no eccentricity. The thickness is 10 millimeters and the offset is 20 millimeters like this. And uh, I can change uh, the position of the of the thumb. So now I see gap and everything I just uh, I just defined. Okay, I'll change the weld for the tank as a double fillet weld. That looks good. I want to uh, have the cap plate as a circular, so I can change it from rectangle to circle. Now it looks quite appealing. And I want to have uh, nice roundings at uh, at the thumb plate. So I'll use a plate editor for that. So either I can use this button in the property grid or right click and uh, use the editor. So I'll add roundings, 30 millimeters, copy the rounding, change the corner, okay. Now I have the, the roundings and the last thing I'll just uh, define the bolt layout. So M12 8.8, .8. the rows will be 30, semicolon negative 30. Now I just mirrored uh, the rows around the axis of, uh, of the plate with the distance of 30 millimeters. The position is uh, 50 millimeters, okay? That uh, looks good. So I'll just copy uh, the operation Yeah, define it also on the member M, uh, M7. Yeah, change the alignment. Good. So now I, uh, I uh, defined the connecting plates for both diagonal bracings. And we can see some warning messages in the left top corner of the application. There is some collision of, uh, of plates. So if I turn on the transparent view again, I see where exactly the, the collision happens. So this connecting plate uh, collide or gasset plate collides with the stiffener and uh, the gasset plate also collides with the cap plate uh, of, uh, of diagonals, of both diagonals. So, uh, I'll go to operations and uh, select operations uh, cut off plate. Now we want to cut this uh, gasset plate and uh, we want to cut it by the stiffener. Okay. I won't be using bounding box, but uh, I'll use surface and uh, define the, the weld as a double fill weld. So now there is a notch in the in the gasset plate. And uh, the last thing I need to do, I need to get rid of the collision of the gasset plate with the cam plate. So for that, I'll use a working plane operation. So again, in the operations, I'll be using now the special operations. So I'll select uh, the working plate, uh, plane, sorry and change the origin from joint to member local coordinate system. And uh, I want to align it to diagonal M6. Now I'll just change the position in the X direction to 170, so 270 millimeters. Go to operations, cut off plate. And uh, I want to cut this plate by working plate one. The remaining part is negative. And uh, if I rotate with the connection, I see that uh, it's been nicely cut. Yeah, This is one way how to cut uh, plates. Of course, I could have used uh, the <clears throat> plate editor. It would do exactly the same. Right now, we just have it nicely aligned uh, with the local coordinate system of the connected bracing. So I'll just copy the working plane 
assign it to member M7 and uh, copy the, the operation, the, the cut operation. So now we're cutting the bottom connecting plate with the other working plane like this. So now even the second uh, uh, plate collision disappeared and uh, we have defined this, this complex uh, connection. So the last thing I need to do now, I need to apply the load. Since I started with a blank project, there is no load effect. There is no loading whatsoever on the connection applied. So I'll click uh, on load to add a first uh, load effect. And now I could either uh, apply the loads manually, fill in, fill in the table, or I can use the import from the Excel spreadsheet. So uh, I'll open the Excel spreadsheet with load effects. Okay, select the X, uh, XLS import select the load effects from the excel file click in the first cell control paste or uh, paste the the, uh, the values confirm okay and now the load has been applied and uh, to be completely sure that the application of the load effects has been correct. I can check the table of unbalanced forces at the bottom of the property grid on the right side of the app. And if I see all zeros, it means that the load uh, effect input is correct. And it's because I have this loads in equilibrium functionality turned on. Now it's really important, especially in case of complex connections, to always have this functionality turned on because uh, having this or using this functionality you actually fulfill the basic condition of structure engineering what does loads in equilibrium mean it means if you add all values of uh, internal forces in the node you should always get zero that's the basic principle of structure engineering and if you want to ensure proper modeling you should always fulfill the this condition of course, there are some exceptions, for example, in case of uh, base play design, because there is only one supported member, then it's absolutely fine to have unbalanced forces, because all unbalanced forces are automatically transferred to the supported end uh, of the bearing member. So again, we always recommend to have this uh, functionality turned on and uh, turn it off only in very special cases and the responsibility is always up to the corresponding structural engineer. So now as the last step, I could just uh, run the analysis and uh, check the results. But uh, we won't do it uh, today. Let's proceed with the second example because we still have some topics uh, to go through and we are almost out of time. So the second connection I'd like to show you is the connection using the stiffening member. So I have a connection where the vertical column, the bearing member is a rectangular hollow section, and we have some eye cross sections connected from uh, both sides of, uh, of the column, or actually from three sides of, uh, of the column. So let's say I want to add stiffening plates uh, to increase the stiffness of the connection. I want to add the stiffening plates uh, and align them with uh, top and bottom edge of uh, connected uh, of connected uh, members. Like this, yeah. But if I would define the, the vertical column as a continuous member, I wouldn't be able to cut the member because when you define a member as a continuous in the connection application, you cannot cut such a, such a member. So what to do now? I had to split uh, the member to two individual uh, ended members. Yeah? First top one and bottom one. 
And since I added the plates, the stiffening plates to correct position, now I can cut both members. Okay, so now I cut uh, the, the uh, column, but uh, again, there is, a, there is a gap and I need to fill the gap with something. Yeah, and I want to use the same cross section as for the top and bottom part. So what uh, to do with that? That's where you should apply the stiffening member operation. This operation is really suitable for, for example, such cases when you need to cut uh, the member from uh, both sides. And uh, if it is a continuous member and you cannot define it, you should define the member as individual ended members and add the stiffening member operation. And that's what I did. And I defined the cross section as the same for the column. So now I see that I can still use uh, the member. I can still uh, assume that it's a continuous member, but with inserted uh, stiffening plates to increase the stiffness of the connection. So now I just need to cut the stiffening members uh, member by those uh, by, by those plates and I need to connect uh, the horizontal member somehow. So I'll be using thin plates operations for that. Okay, so now I connected uh, horizontal members, but I see that there are some, uh, some plate clashes uh, again. Yeah, the, the, the members uh, overlap, the, the, the plates of uh, individual members uh, overlap with, uh, with stiffening plates. So now I need to cut uh, connected members, especially the top flange and bottom flange somehow. And I want to have it really nice, uh, good looking connection with rounded uh, cuts. So to cut those uh, parts, top part and bottom part of each member, I will be using negative uh, volume operation. Uh, so I'll add negative uh, volumes like this. Yeah, so negative volume second, third, fourth, and fifth. And now I'll just cut, uh, cut those members using those negative uh, volumes. Okay, and now I see that uh, the cuts are nicely rounded. So this is also another uh, another option: how to cut members yeah, using the negative volume operation. The same would apply if I want to introduce, for example, an opening in this uh, in this member in the members web. Yeah, I could define the negative volume again and uh, just apply a cut and it would cut the member based on the defined negative volume. And since I want to prevent those connected uh, members from buckling, it is also possible because usually uh, such members are prevented from buckling, for example, when you uh, when you apply a slab, there is a slab uh, on on top of uh, on top of the member or a cladding. Yeah? It means that in reality, such a slab or cladding will prevent those members from buckling. And you can simulate uh, this effect also in the connection application by applying the lateral torsional restraint operation. So I apply such operation to all three connected members like this. Uh, you can define various properties. Uh, it can be either discrete or continuous uh, restraint, and uh, you can have it as a rigid, free in one or other direction, or set your own stiffness. Uh, in case you want to add uh, your own stiffness, you need to calculate it 
separately for him, for example, a design, uh, design guide. Okay, so now I can simply calculate uh, the connection. So the analysis is being performed. We see uh, the results. And if you will go to the check section, turn on equivalent stress, mesh, and deform shape, I can increase. So I see that it deforms really only in plane. So those connected members are indeed prevented uh, from buckling. Okay, so this was a uh, second uh, practical example. And now uh, let's have a look at uh, some typical use cases where the analysis is either 0% or doesn't reach uh, 100%. So let me open, for example, the, this, uh, this connection. So the first case is if we go to the code setup, and you have enabled stop at limit strain functionality. This functionality causes that if the connection is overloaded, uh, the analysis will stop once uh, the plastic strain in uh, one of the components of the connection reaches the, the limit value, 5%, then the analysis stops. And uh, in the overall results, you would see the percentage of the load that was actually applied uh, until one of the components uh, hit the, the limit value of a plastic strain. So this is one case uh, when you don't see that 100% uh, uh, of the load uh, was applied. If you want to continue over the limit of the plastic strain, simply unselect uh, this checkbox and uh, the calculation will continue. So let me calculate this connection and uh, check the results. Okay, now I see that there is some singularity. And if I zoom out a little bit, I see that one of the stiffener is flying somewhere in the space. So uh, how, how, to, how to react on that, to that? Uh, we can go to the check section and uh, see what's wrong. We see that there is a singularity and we see on which plate this singularity happened. So if I go back to the design tab and check the stiffener one operation, and if I check the, the properties of, of this operation, I see that there is no weld defined uh, for those stiffeners. That's why the stiffener flew to a space and that's why we have this, uh, this singularity. Also, if you have a single bolt connection and you don't uh, change the model type for the member to N, V, Y, V, Z, it means that changing this uh, model type to N, V, Y, V, Z, it means that it prevents this, uh, the, the selected member from rotation. If you wouldn't do it in case of single bolt connections, then uh, the setting would cause a mechanism. The member would start to rotate uh, around the, the single ball. And again, you would see a uh, singularity in, uh, in the model. Another case uh, when the analysis doesn't reach 100% or is 0% uh, is uh, when it is a too complex uh, connection. It doesn't mean that there is something wrong with the model. Uh, it's just the fact that uh, the initial solver setup might not be sufficient enough to perform the full analysis. So what to do with that? If you go to code setup, uh, we recommend to change the number of analysis iterations to a higher number and uh, also change the divergent iterations count to a higher number. This will allow uh, the software and the solver to perform more than just 25 iteration steps and uh, you would see uh, results. 
Another case is when you have a bearing member with a rectangle or uh, simply a hollow cross section. If the bearing member is with hollow cross section, it means that uh, the geometrically and materially nonlinear analysis is automatically performed. And uh, again, if there is some component that is uh, failing for, for this bearing member, since uh, this is more advanced analysis, it may cause that uh, the analysis won't finish. So what to do in this case, we recommend to unselect the geometrical nonlinearity, perform the analysis again, the, the analysis will be performed, you will see what's uh, what's wrong with uh, which part of the very member and uh, you can do uh, necessary changes accordingly. And one of the last typical use cases is when you have, uh, for example, this, uh, this cut of hollow sections. So you want to apply a, a mitre cut for these sections, but uh, due to different uh, angles of individual, individual members, the software tells you that the weld was not uh, created due to geometry restrictions. And if we turn on the transparent mode, we would see that indeed there is no uh, weld. So what to do? In this case, uh, we recommend select one of the members and change the alpha rotation slightly. So let's see, two degrees, that's not enough, but three degrees. That's enough. The weld uh, has been created and uh, we can proceed with uh, the analysis. So in case of mitre cuts for hollow sections, if the weld is not uh, created, then changing the rotation of one of the members will help and you may proceed with the analysis. So let me jump back to the presentation. Uh, Again, we are at the end uh, of the session. What happens after the webinar? After the webinar, please uh, fill in short survey, share your feedback with us. Also, as I mentioned at the beginning, we will place the recording of the session to our support center and uh, the YouTube channel. If you do not have Idea Static license yet, go to ideastatica.com and download the free trial and try the possibilities of the software on your own. And uh, to help you with that, I recommend uh, going to the support center where you can find uh, hundreds of useful knowledge-based articles, step-by-step -step tutorials guiding you through the modeling process together with theoretical backgrounds, uh, uh, webinar, recordings and also library of sample projects that are ready to download and uh, use. What happens next? The last session of this uh, Master Your Connection series will be in 14 days, in two weeks, on uh, 5th of September, and uh, the topic will be BIM links. So that's all from me for today. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, and I hope uh, we'll see you also at the next webinar. Thank you very much and bye-bye.